A school counselor accused of molesting a 13-year-old girl from his school has his first day in court. We'll show you what happened. A statewide task force in San Diego meeting to figure out how to avoid charter school fraud after the largest fraud case in U.S. history. Plus, a CBS 8 follow-up. A sigh of relief tonight for a local man who lost $18,000 in a phone scam. This Jimmy's restaurant in Chula Vista has been vacant for many years now. So what's the deal? We're looking into it. And the high school you've never heard of is making some noise. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A school counselor accused of molesting a 13 year old student made his first appearance in court today. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Connor Cheneau, who was working for the Vista Unified School District, was arrested last week after the girl's mother says she found them together in the back seat of a car. CBS 8 Steve Price joins us live from the Vista Courthouse with new details. Steve. And Carlo and Marcella, we learned a lot of new information in court today, including that the 13 year old girl attends school at the same campus where Chinov is a counselor and that apparently they set up their meeting earlier on social media. Here's what else we heard in court today. We wish to honor plea of not guilty at this time. 27 year old Connor Chinov faces four felony charges, including two counts of committing a lewd and lascivious act on a child under 14. Okay, so the victim in this case is a 13 year old female. Deputy Our District Attorney, Attorney Jessica Stair says it happened November 18th at Guahomi Lake Park in Oceanside. The girl's mother, using a tracking app, found her daughter in the back seat of Chinov's car. When she opened the door, she found that the defendant had his pants down. Stair says the teen admitted kissing Chinov and touching him below the waist. She says Chinov is a counselor at the victim's school and that the two set up the meeting at the park over social media. You are ordered to remain at all times 100 yards away from her and her home and her work and her vehicle and her school. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Chinov, who also worked as a girls' water polo coach in the North County and as a lifeguard in Carlsbad, is currently in custody. His bail was initially set at $1 million, but his attorney, arguing that Chinov has no previous criminal history, asked for that to be lowered. The deputy district attorney disagreed. We do believe that this defendant poses a safety risk and are asking the court to keep bail as set. The judge asked if there are any other alleged victims at this time, and when the deputy district attorney said no, he agreed to lower Chinov's bail to $325,000, but with conditions, including Chinov wearing a GPS tracking monitor, not going on school grounds, and staying at least 15 feet away from anyone under 18 years old. And I reached out to the city of Carlsbad to see if Chinov is still employed as a lifeguard with them. They told me that he actually hasn't worked for them since 2022. I also reached out to the water polo club that he's affiliated with, Carlo and Marcella, but they have not gotten back to me yet with his status. Steve, this has got to be upsetting to a lot of parents to hear this story. And Chinov is accused of very serious crimes. You mentioned he's charged with four felony counts. If convicted, how much time could he face behind bars? Carlo, his exposure, if convicted on everything, is 12 years. And I should add that the prosecutor in this case is asking for parents to talk to their kids to see if there could be any more victims out there. At this point, the judge making it clear they don't know of any, but they're not sure. So they are asking for parents to have conversations with their children. All right, we'll see if anything more comes to light. Steve Price reporting live for us. Thanks, Steve. Meantime, a plea deal may be in the works tonight for a former National City teacher accused of an inappropriate relationship with two young boys. As a result, Jacqueline Ma's preliminary hearing, preliminary hearing set for today was pushed back to December 12th. A plea deal would keep the case from going to trial and prevent alleged young victims from having to endure a trial. Ma's being held without bail. Both of the alleged victims were students at Lincoln Acres, where she taught. A La Jolla man who lost $18,000 in a wire fraud scam has some good news to share tonight. His bank reimbursed the money, no questions asked. CBS 8's David Godfordson has the way the story ended in this Working For You report. How old are your kids? Uh, 18, 17, the twins are 12, and the youngest is 8. Mark Del Muro is a father of five who got conned out of $18,000 in a bank wire fraud scam. He really needed that money for his family during the holidays. 
you know, braces, clothes, property tax. <laughs> Ten days ago, Mark agreed to be interviewed on camera, telling his story to CBS 8 so that other people might not fall victim to the same scam. A con man had called Mark pretending to be with the U.S. Bank Fraud Division. The scammer was able to change Mark's password and wire transfer the 18 grand to the East Coast. La Jolla man is sharing a warning tonight after getting conned. His story went viral with 90,000 views on YouTube. I reached out to U.S. Bank and the vice president of public affairs promised to take another look at Mark's case. Then on the day before Thanksgiving. Lo and behold, there's 18,000 and change in our savings account. No notice, no call from the bank. The $18,000 was simply transferred back in. I think all the views from YouTube and the great coverage that San Diego News 8 did for me um, really put a spotlight on the problem of fraud and wire fraud. Mark says he learned a valuable lesson, if in doubt. Just hang up and call back. You know, it may be inconvenient, but uh, at least you know. Mark was so grateful to CBS 8, he showed up at the TV station with a gift-wrapped present for his favorite reporter, a wireless toolkit, just to say thank you for all our efforts. Now, unfortunately, I cannot accept that $200 toolkit because our parent company has rules against payola. But on the upside, U.S. Bank did the right thing. They refunded Mark's money, and my faith in the U.S. banking industry is almost entirely restored. In La Jolla, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. We have a working for you update on a story we first brought to you last week. People living in San Diego's Loma Portal neighborhood expressed their frustration to us over the removal of antique lampposts in their area. They were upset after seeing several posts taken down and replaced with modern lighting near Poinsettia and Lotus Streets. They told CBS 8 they're worried that the project would extend into their other streets. We've been working for you to get more details from the city about this project. Today, a spokesperson explained 39 lampposts on the north side of Chatworth Boulevard are being replaced, but there was currently no plan to remove any of the antique lampposts on the south side, including the ones you see here that are in the middle of the street, which is what the neighborhood is known for. We will continue to update the story as we get more details. The old Jimmy's Family Restaurant on 3rd Avenue in Chula Vista has been vacant for years now, creating an eyesore that viewers are reaching out to us about. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to find out who owns this building and what they're planning to do with it. Yeah, the front door is all chained up and been locked up for many years now, and people living around here just want to know, why has this building been vacant for so long? Too bad, it, you know, we see it like that. You know, it's going to waste. The old Jimmy's restaurant here on 3rd Avenue in Oxford Street has seen better days. It's been vacant a long time? A long time, and they haven't done nothing to it. Joe Ariza, who's lived in South Bay his whole life, says it's been vacant for at least eight years, if not longer. The last Yelp review I could find online was from 2011. Did you ever eat there before? Yeah, it was really good. Breakfast was real good back then. I called the county recorder's office and they told me this building, along with the entire Oxford Center strip mall, has been owned by the Deutsche Chula Vista Oxford Center LLC since 1997. I ran into JC here. He's in charge of maintenance for the property. He gave me yeah. a tour inside. As you can see, it's pretty much, you know, downgraded. It needs, to, it needs a nice, good little facelift. So. He's been on the job for five years and says sometimes it's tough to keep the place secured. So you've had people trying to, like, break in here and stuff? Yeah, to try to, you know, try to sleep in here. Um, you know, I guess when it gets cold outside, they try to come in here and just find a little spot. But He says the vacancy and unfortunate vandalism here have taken a toll on this place. They broke in here before I, I started working here, and they, they tore all the copper off. He says over the years and even in recent months, he's given tours to prospective tenants, but nothing's come of it. I showed this for a couple people that um, they're already owners for restaurants and stuff like that. And uh, they like, you know, they like the building, they like the actual parking. I, I don't know. I don't know. They, they talked to the owner. Michael Deutsch is listed as CEO for the LLC. I called his home and office and couldn't reach him, but I stopped by Pacific Coast Commercial. They're the property management company for the strip mall. They couldn't tell me of any plans for a new tenant. They took my number but didn't call me back. Do you hope they do something with it? Uh, yeah, hopefully, because it's right in the middle of everything, and this, it's a nice building. 
Too bad it's naked, you know? We'll stay on this story in Chula Vista working for you. Brian White, CBS 8. Here at CBS 8, we want to help solve problems affecting you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. This year is now the busiest Thanksgiving weekend for air travel since 2019. TSA says it screened more than 27 million people at airports across the nation between Thanksgiving and Sunday. Some airports are still seeing big crowds today from the many travelers who try to avoid the weekend rush home. People feel very confident to travel and it's showing. They're prioritizing their budgets to be able to take those trips to see their loved ones. If you're still looking to book a flight before the end of the year, AAA suggests looking at early morning and non-stop options. Still ahead tonight, why a statewide task force on preventing charter school fraud is in San Diego this week. Plus, we are just hours away from Giving Tuesday, how you can help out feeding San Diego this year. Today we were a little bit warmer than usual, but not by much as we continue to have Santa Ana winds in the forecast, but things are getting a lot more damp around here by the middle of the week. Those details, they're coming up. But first, money to plant more trees in San Diego. Will your neighborhood be getting more shade? An Earth 8 report next.